Welcome back to On The Inside, your go-to channel for all things TV and entertainment. And today, we've got some bittersweet news for you sex education fans out there. The hit Netflix series that's been keeping us entertained and educated is coming to an end with its fourth season. But don't worry, we've got all the juicy details for you right here. Sex education has been more than just a comedy about, well, sex. It's been a journey of self-discovery, exploring topics like self-love, boundaries, LGBTQIA plus relationships, and so much more, all set against the backdrop of Moordale Secondary School. Or at least, it used to be Moordale, until benefactors decided to close down the sex school and send our favorite characters off to new schools and countries. In this final season, we'll see Otis Milburn, played by Asa Butterfield, trying to bring his sex clinic to a new school with the support of his best friend, Eric Effiel portrayed by Nkubi Gatwa. Meanwhile, Otis's lover, Maeve Wiley, played by Emma Mackey, is studying in America. There's a lot going on, from Gene raising a baby to Adam Groff reconnecting with his father, and even a hint at the existence of aliens. And of course, our beloved cast members are ready to move on to new adventures. But as we bid farewell to sex education, we'll also take a look at why this decision might be the right one. The series has grown and evolved over the years, but there have been some signs that it's time for it to reach its logical endpoint. Stick around as we delve into the highs and lows of the series and discuss what's next for the talented cast. Sex Education is right to end with Season 4. Sex Education has kept fans wanting more for years. Lori Nunn's hit comedy for Netflix has taught some important lessons, not just about sex, but also about self-love, boundaries, queerness, and LGBTQIA plus relationships, recovering from sexual assault, parenting, and more, all centered around the diverse cast at Moordale Secondary School, or not Moordale, as the final season is moving the remaining cast members to new schools in new countries after benefactors had the sex school closed. The first teaser shows Otis Milburn, Asa Butterfield, trying to bring his sex clinic to a new school with the support of his BFF, Eric Effion and Kubi Gatwa, while his lover, Maeve Wiley, Emma Mackey, is studying in America. Oh, and Jean Gillian Anderson is raising a baby, Adam Groff. Connor Swindles is reconnecting with his father, Michael, Alistair Petrie, and aliens might be real. Not to mention the cast is ready to move on. Mackey has been taking bigger roles, from Barbie to death on the Nile and leading an adaptation of Emily. Gatwa joined Mackie and Barbie and is now taking the keys to the TRDIS as the next Doctor Who. Tanya Reynolds and Patricia Allison left the show before the season started, along with Simone Ashley and Racky Thakur. Beyond the moving cast members, sex education has reached a logical endpoint. The series about self-discovery has grown a lot since its first season, and while it's still effective, the constant moving parts and overextended storylines are a sign that it's time for the series to finish. More characters don't necessarily make more viable storylines. Sex education has continued to thrive mixing new characters and stories with its talented original cast. Cal's Duasala arc in season three delved into not only the struggles non-binary teenagers go through for acceptance, but also their joy and their ingenuity. Isaac, George Robinson, not only served as a compelling rival to Otis, but also as a nuanced and intimate portrayal of disability. And the series even toggles with new avenues for its original cast to explore. Sex Education is ending with season four. Good. However, sometimes the series adds so many storylines that not everything can fully breathe. New headmistress Hope Haddon, Jemima Kirk, for instance, is pushed too far as a villain. Yes, the show had its previous headmaster pull a Regina George to get Jean fired, but Haddon's switch from dancing in front of her students to forcing dress codes and locking Cal into a room is all so harsh. They try to add some nuance to Hope's struggle to have a child, but still they never really found the right blend with her. And some characters do not have enough space. Rahim, Sami Otobali, had plenty of time to thrive in the second season as Eric's boyfriend, and their bond, their differences, and their breakup were handled tactfully throughout the second season. In season three, he showed up sparsely as a reminder of the past, but had little to do. 
His most significant moment was throwing Poop off a bus during a trip to France. He does forge a nice friendship with Adam, but he just does not have all that much to do. Lily, Tanya Reynolds, and Ola, Patricia Allison, are both important members of the Moordale community. Lily is one of the first people Otis works with for his clinic and also provides him the space for his most poignant lessons, the It's Not a Race scene being one of the show's best. Not to mention she made an adaptation of Romeo and Juliet about horny aliens. Ola, meanwhile, is Otis' first partner before their harsh falling out, then finds her own form of love in Lily. In season three, they are shoved aside. Ola has one episode where she gets to figure out being a brother to Otis again and Lily is pushed through a drab storyline about rediscovering her love of sci-fi and the unknown that ends with the possibility of aliens being real. Did sex education get too big too quick? The aliens might exist point is one example of the show getting too ridiculous at times. There are times it works, the students quickly creating an impromptu film with giant costumes showing their love for sex to get back at hope is a bit much, but still fun. It also brings Ruby, Mimi Keen, who had been in the background following her breakup with Otis, back for a random fight with hope to keep the film running. Eric's trip of self-discovery in Nigeria not only creates new confusion over his relationship with Adam, but helps him realize he wants a more active relationship. Even if Eric is a bit harsh to Adam, but not every turn works out. The class trip to France, especially when the school is struggling for financing, is odd and including the bus scene with Rahim throwing poop out the window when he clogs the toilet is, for lack of a better word, too messy. On a more personal level, Jean spends the majority of the third season trying to reconnect with Jacob, Mikhail Persprandt, after cheating on him and also figuring out the whole co-parenting situation. He even made Jean get a paternity test because of his distrust. The arc thrived not just because Anderson and Persbrand are fantastic, but also because it played well off their relationship. Jean figuring out how to be intimate again and Jacob learning to trust someone. But of course, Jean gets paternity results for the new baby, and Jacob may not be the father. It feels cheap to spend time in the final season delving into this and potentially rehashing the arc Jean and Jacob went through last season rather than letting them just be parents and grow as a couple. It's a solid cliffhanger, and I'm sure the writing team will play into that well. But the storyline is not the right kind of circumstance for the show. Sex education thrived by combining outlandish jokes with intimate moments of exploration, and the last season just felt too busy. Otis needs to study up in season four. Otis has gone through quite the journey so far himself that his ride through life reached a similar road in season three. Granted, he does have new journeys. His relationship with Ruby provides space for both Otis and Ruby to learn about themselves and give Otis a space to reflect. And Otis not being able to reciprocate Ruby's expression of love is heartbreaking, but also understandable. He has not gotten over Maeve. He also finally gets to realistically discuss a relationship with Maeve in season three. Beyond that though, Otis restarts the cycles of him being a jerk and having to learn. His fighting with Ola as they move in together to start a family is too rushed. They never follow up and Otis apologizes to Ola far too easily, especially as they are still getting over their relationship. Also, his fight with Isaac over Maeve, while Maeve was looking for her missing sister, just played off as needlessly cruel, even for him. The show seems to back into Otis as a jerk storylines fairly often, and they rarely work out. It was the first season where Otis spent little to no time as a sex therapist, and outside his scenes with Ruby and Maeve, sex education missed the mark with its lead. With all that said, the third season of Sex Education still provided ample laughs and heartfelt moments, and this is a team talented enough to turn in a great fourth season. The large cast means there are a myriad of ways the series could make spin-offs and give characters the right focus. Maybe they can allow Michael Groff to rediscover himself without forcing him to re-enter his marriage and allow Maureen, Samantha Spiro, to continue her own growth. Or they could revisit Eric when Gatwa is ready. Sex Education is still a brilliant series, but like its hormonal teens, the series has taken some swings that have left something to be desired. So maybe it's time to take a breather for a minute. And there you have it, folks. 
The scoop on why sex education is wrapping up with its fourth season. It's been a wild ride filled with laughter, life lessons, and plenty of memorable moments. We've seen this show tackle important issues and introduce us to a cast of characters we won't soon forget. While we may be sad to say goodbye to Moordale and its quirky residents, it's important to remember that all good things must come to an end. But fear not. This isn't the last we'll see of the talented cast and creative team behind Sex Education. There are endless possibilities for spin-offs and new adventures for our favorite characters. As we look ahead to the future, we'll keep our fingers crossed for a fantastic fourth season and maybe even some exciting surprises. Until then, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to stay up to date with all the latest entertainment news right here on On the Inside. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll catch you in the next video.